Hello. Hello. Welcome to the Knit Girls. This is episode 217. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. It is August 24th. Nor are we late. The tech gods have not been kind this week, but we're trying something different and yeah. hoping it works. So There we go. Um, let's see. Why don't you talk about what you're working on? I only have one thing, so that's perfect. So I am working on my Camp Loopy um, 3 sweater, and it is the Every Last Yard sweater out of Tosh DK in the medieval colorway. And Tosh DK kind of falls between a sport and a worsted weight. Well, obviously. That was silly. <laughs> DK, <laughs> DK and worsted weight. It's kind of more on a... It's a plumper DK. It's put on a few pounds. <laughs> so um, it is 225 yards for every four ounces or so. Actually, a little bit more than four ounces. I think when I weighed my skeins, they were around 115 grams. Um... So, it's going. I'm not saying it's going well because I... So, um, this is what's going on with it. <laughs> You've had some negative knitting on that this week, right? I've had a lot of negative knitting on that this week. Um, so, last time y'all saw it, it was just this section right here, which is the collar. The collar, yeah. And so, you do some short rows on that. I think I just finished one row of short rows, maybe, or one side of short rows. And then you, um, you rip out... Um, and I can see exactly where it is. Yeah. You rip out the provisional casts on and then work the other side of the short rows. And a lot of people, reading mods after you start a sweater is never a good plan because <laughs> a lot of people actually flip the provisional cast on so that it was the back of the neck because uh, there's a very distinct line. Yeah, but nobody's going to be looking that closely at the back of your neck. No, I mean, but this is the front. Like, this is right here. Oh, that's weird. So, um, a lot of people have modded it to the back, but I don't read ahead of things, because <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. So, um, I had gone on Rav and looked and made sure that it was flattering on my size body, but I never went and really read through the mods until I got pretty far down. But, um, so, mods that I made... So I did the collar and picked it up as usual, and it does a raglan increase. And then um, you're increasing more on the sleeves and the back than you are the front. It's got a very narrow band of fabric right here. And I wanted that narrow band to be a little bit bigger. So after I was done increasing, you still had to knit like three inches to get down to the underarm. So I continued increasing just on the front. Mm -hmm. every other row um, and then like every fourth row on the other side so um, that made this fabric a little bit wider in the front um, than it usually calls for then I got down to the sleeves and um, after I got through the sleeves I decreased the stitches back down a little bit so I wouldn't have like flappy arm right yeah. here and um the rest is pretty much per pattern, except when I got down to the waist decreases, it has you decrease from my size down to like 172. So your choices are like 172, no, 171, 180, or 189. And um, the lace repeat is a repeat of nine stitches. So I cut that in the middle and did 180. Um, and I'm glad I did because it really does go out. Mm -hmm. Like, it swoops back out quite a bit. And I'm hoping blocking will kind of take care of that problem. It is going to grow when it's blocked. Um, that's one of the features of this sweater is it uses a superwash yarn on purpose that grows. Mm -hmm. So that um, when you get down to the bottom, well, when you get down, it'll gain length and width. Anyway, so at this point, it's like 4.5 stitches per inch. I needed four stitches per inch, but my swatch grew so much that mm -hmm. I got that. So it's going to grow when I um, block it for sure. And I did the lace, and I got down to around here and realized that I was totally off back here. So I ripped five inches of lace out at knit night, 
on Melissa's last night oh. <laughs> with MJ in my lap. And so um, then I picked it back up. MJ is a child, not an adult. Just FYI. She is. <laughs> She's two. Um, and then I re it back down. And when it got to, it's supposed to be 17 and a half inches long from underarm down from my size. But when it got to 16, it's looking pretty long, and I know it's going to grow quite mm -hmm. a bit. And so mom was over. We installed a ceiling fan yesterday in my house, so I have light. Yay! Um, <laughs> that was important. So um, I tried it on for her, and she was like, no, you need to bind off. The pattern calls for just, like, binding it off regular, but as you can see, that lace wants to flip up quite a bit, like that much. So I'm blocking, I'll fix some of that for sure, but I wanted to do a little bit more of an edge on it to try to keep that under control, so I did an I-cord bind off on it, and I ended up with an inch of yarn left at the end of it, so uh, just in like every last yard, just enough. Um, the sleeves, I'm doing three-quarter sleeves, it calls for bracelet length. The sleeves are a little bit tight. If I had to do it over again, I would probably have kept them up a sleeve size. Um, well, but they'll but, grow some as well, right? But they'll grow, yeah. So what, we're hoping blocking is going to take care of that. And the sleeves come down to right around here right now, like yeah. just past my elbow. So they might grow a little bit more. I actually have enough yarn, I think, that I could do full sleeves. Um, I have one skein left at, after completing the sleeve to three-quarter length. So I probably it would have been close, though. Mm -hmm. And I don't wear full sleeves, especially not like lace full sleeves. Yeah. So I really thought about just leaving the lace on the sleeves off, but whatever. And then I did an eye cord bind off on that, ran out of yarn with five stitches left, joined new yarn, and bound that the rest of the way up. I have a lot of ends to weave in on this sweater. Um, there's been a lot of, like, not knots, but when, um, like, the plies, if I undo this, it's pretty loosely plied to begin with, so it's going to pull quite a bit, but, like, one of the plies will actually be like snapped yeah cut and so then it goes like mm -hmm. that and then it gets all kind of crazy afterwards so I've had a um I've had that happen four or five times so I've had to weave in a lot of ends on a sweater that should have had like 12 ends and now has like 20 ends but that's yeah. fine I don't mind weaving in ends and actually I'll weave them in and then um not clip them until after it's been blocked because it is going to grow so much so, um, I think that's about it. I have around two hours left of knitting on a sleeve, and, and then I'm done. Even with what the yarn you'll have left, you've already met the yardage requirement for the Loop oh, Camp yeah. Loopy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, I had 1,100 yards of this. Camp Loopy was 800. Okay. And I'm going to use around 1,000, maybe 1,050 was swatching. Yeah. So, um, okay. yeah, I'll definitely have met it. Um, also, I'm alternating the mm -hmm. balls. But I'm not doing, like, every other row. I'm doing till I have a good bit left, like, a uh, marble-sized ball. And then I'm knitting with the new row. I'm doing it that way. I knit two rows with the new, knit two rows with the old, and then swishing it over. You're doing the cheater alternation. I, I totally am. But, um, like, after an inch, I made sure to make, like, double-check it yeah. in sunlight to make sure it wasn't, like... I checked well, all the skeins outside in sunlight. Too. And Loopy is really good about doing their best to make sure you get the most matched skeins that oh, you yeah. can get. So Lynn doesn't want me complaining to her, so <laughs> <laughs> she takes care of me. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> nice it for everyone. We have a friend, um, Lynn, who is she's like I guess like the office manager. I don't, I don't know. She's she's under Cherry. <laughs> um, and she works there, so whenever one of us orders, we always text her and say, make sure you give my yarn a kiss, you know, or whatever, so. Yeah, and someday she's like, I didn't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how busy she is. Yeah. And how many orders they haven't. So this has been the only thing that I've been working on nonstop. Um, been ending around 100 yards a night to try to get it done, especially with the snafu. So I would have had it done probably three days ago if I hadn't had to rip all that out. Yeah. Okay. Which is frustrating. But I'll get it done in time for the 30th, or the 31st, for sure. Yeah, that's, you've got still all week. 
left. To knit, like, two hours worth of knitting. Yeah, and just block it and weave in ends and stuff. Yeah. Yesterday, I, w- I watched the um, movie A Man with One Red Shoe with Tom Hanks. It's on Netflix. I've never seen oh it. Oh, my gosh. It's super 80s CIA <laughs> spy-tastic. <laughs> like, and today, I plan on watching Sneakers. Which is also, like, the tech in that is going to make you cringe. It's like watching Hackers. Now. Oh, Hackers is awful. It's, it's awesome. Well, I mean, I don't mean it's awful. It's it's not uh, a show that can really grow with the technology. <laughs> is all. But at the time, it was, like, super cutting Oh, edge. yeah. Oh, yeah. It even has Angelina Jolie in it when she was, like, early it 20s. Does. Like, super Man young. with One Red Shoe has... Um, the villain from the Muppet movie in it. He's the villain in this. One of the villains. It's got uh, the Gilmore guy, dad, the Gilmore girl's dad in it. Ed Herman or whatever. It's got Carrie Fisher, oh, wow. Star Wars, <laughs> Tom Hanks, and uh, like John Belushi, or one wow. of the Belushi guys. Like it's hilarious. What a collection! It's an awesome 80s classic movie. I highly recommend it if you're super bored. <laughs> it's on Netflix. So, back to knitting. Uh-huh. What are you knitting on? I am knitting on two sweaters, and that's pretty much it. Uh, even though it's been two weeks since we recorded, this whole, this previous week, um, the past week, I haven't had like a ton of mojo. I don't know. I've just been kind of mopey. And is it super hot there? Because it's a hundred a hundred no, degrees here. It's not. So that makes it hard. It's been not actually. We went to the dog beach today, and it was absolutely beautiful. It was like seventy five degrees and sunny and ocean breeze, and it's beautiful. It was so nice to see all the dogs. I've never seen so many happy dogs in one place ever. <laughs> but um, anyway. I don't know, I've been just kind of grumpy this week. I think it's because I have to go to Baltimore and I don't want to. (laughs) But um, anyway, I've been working on a couple of sweaters. Um, The first is living in my bag spot, awesome granny bag, because it's huge. huge. And it is um, out of Barocco Remix, which is a bunch of different recycled fibers. It's got like nylon, silk, wool, some other stuff. It's like your favorite sweatshirt is what it feels like to me. And um, I'm knitting the eased pattern, the bulky version by Alicia Plummer. It is a pay-for pattern on RAV, and I'm knitting it in, I don't know, 48 or 50 size, whichever one it is, because I want it to be a big bulky one. So I've separated for sleeves here. It's on small needles, so it's hard to tell, but it's probably, um, I need to start I've done the decreases and I need to start waist increases now. So oh. I, it's really fast because it's knit on size 11s, I think. Yeah, 11s, 8.0 millimeter. But I don't know, I can't knit on this for a long time because the big needles are awkward. So I have to take breaks. Um, it has a different, you pick up around the neck and you do this like sort of really loose turtleneck with strings. Yeah, with a draw cord. Which I may actually just do a hood. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. I'm not going to do it as I think a hood would be super cool. So we'll see. I haven't decided yet. But, um, yeah, this is what I've been knitting on a little bit. But the most of my work this week has been on the Trick, which is by Asa Tricosa. Asa? Asa? I think it's Asa Tricosa. Um... And that's living in a bag that's too small for it, pulling your string. Aww. I need to upgrade it. I just haven't. It, it was living in this bag, and it was fine, but now it's too big for it. Um, what are you knitting that out of? Oh, that's right, the Butternut DK. Yeah, this is out of Highland Handmaid's Butternut DK in the teal colorway. And I'm alternating. I wasn't. Teal? I thought you were doing it in the gray. I, well, it's called teal. Okay. It is a, like a really steely blue gray the color looks pretty accurate to me it's just it was named teal I don't know it's not teal but that was the colorway name I think but anyway this is the color I'm knitting it in Um, I'm alternating balls now I wasn't at the very beginning because the pattern is so crazy at the beginning there's a lot going on in it uh, to add in alternating balls would have just been too much so once I um, 
split for the sleeves, I started alternating balls. Actually, before that. So I have split for the sleeves, and I've only done a couple rows since then because it felt like a milestone. Um, it's difficult to see because these aren't on really long enough needles either, which is fine for when I'm knitting it. I'd rather it be bunched up than have to constantly move it all the time. Yeah, definitely. So this is what it looks like. It's got a really cool, um, stretchy, nice collar detail, which is all knit at the same time. I do like the way that she has you slip stitches at the edge between the Ooh, sleeves. I do like that. I think it gives it a nice delineation. Um, it. I will say that once the craziness all settled down and you started going back and forth across, um, there were a ton of increases that were happening at the same time, like neck increases, body increases, sleeve increases, you know, and it's every third row for this and every fifth row for this. And But she made it really easy by creating a table for each size where you could I just check yeah. it off. So That's wonderful. that was really helpful. So it's got a nice center this detail. This is moving up in my queue. I like that a lot. And um, I'm about to start it. it the center line increases and I'm about to start that section um, but like I said I did just split for the sleeve so I've only got a couple rows in since then and I'm knitting that on size 8 5.0 millimeter needles um, although it has been challenging I've really enjoyed knitting it so far for the most part um, I did have to rip out the beginning the very very beginning like four times because I was trying to do other things at the same time and when you're trying to learn a new technique that's probably not the best idea. Yeah. <laughs> but um, actually Michael and I have been watching Big Bang Theory a lot. I love Big Bang Theory. I didn't think he would but he he got in he watched the first couple episodes with me and now we're on the seventh season. <laughs> so we are we've been watching a lot of that. I wish they'd put it on Netflix. Yeah we have just been getting it from the internet. Mm. So um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on. Uh, this will definitely go with me to Baltimore. I do have two more balls of yarn I'm going to have to wind um, to take with me because I'm not going to have a winder there, obviously. Um, assuming that I, you know, in my head, I'm going to have all this time, right? I'd rather go ahead and get it wound because I'm going to need them anyway at some point. Yeah. So I'd rather go ahead and get them wound. Um, Let's so see. what are you taking with you to Baltimore knitting wise? I don't know. That's I'm so anxious about being separated from my stash that it's causing me anxiety dreams. But um, I'm definitely taking Trick. Okay. I will probably take the bulky sweater as well. Okay. And then I'm going to take the socks um, that I'm knitting for your mom, the caterpillar uh -huh. green ones. And I'll probably take another ball of yarn for socks just in case, but okay. that's plenty. It's only a week. Like, yeah, I think you'll be fine with all that. I'm not taking my mini spinner. I'm not taking any other equipment or anything like that. Um, I'm working grave shift while I'm there, which sucks, but... So when you, they need a lot of tech work done, I would assume. Yeah, when the uh, casinos aren't as busy. Right, um, yeah. So my, the company I work for is opening a casino in Baltimore next week on Tuesday and I will be there tomorrow through the day after Labor Day but I'll be working 2 in the morning until 10 in the morning and then hopefully sleeping at some point. Um, I may try to get out to a knit shop one evening. I don't know. We'll see. You could go to Clover Hill maybe. That would be fun. Clover Hill is a really nice shop. I may go back out there. I would like to possibly, I need to map out how far it is from fiber space because they got a big shipment of hazelnuts in it and I really want some hazelnuts. So. Ooh, I like hazelnuts. Okay. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I bet you it's less than an hour and a half. I'm sure it is. I just, I don't know. I'll have to see how well I adjust the sleep schedule first. Yeah, definitely. I did rip out my Ho Aloha by uh, Mel because it was a mystery um, sweater and it just didn't end up looking great on me which is no in, like slide at the pattern. Mel's a great designer. I just it didn't look right on me so I ended up ripping it out and 
re-skinning all of the yarn and then re-soaking it and now it's beautiful and I can use it again and this is Madeline Tosh so, Sport Tosh Sport, yeah in the William Morris colorway and I still have three full skeins plus this so I have like a lot of yards so I still have plenty to, to re-knit a sweater um, I may take the littlest skein with me and just do a swatch while yeah. I'm there because I think what I'm going to do is do a custom fit sweater to see how I like the custom fit um, interface and all that. Yeah. See what it's like. So um, I may take the little skein with me and swatch. We'll see. Sounds awesome. And custom fit is a software designed by Amy Herzog yep. where you put in your measurements, your swatch measurements, and then and you get to pick what kind of sweater you want. How, what kind of sleeves do you want? Do you want it to be textured? Do you want it to have a V-neck or a scoop neck? Or how long do you want it to be? How snug do you want it to be in the bust? You know, like it's a really yeah. great piece of software. It, it, it appears to be. I haven't used the generation to actually to tell you for sure, but it seems great. Um, I also finished washing my Cormo, so it's oh, cool. totally washed. Um, it took three days for the last of it to dry because it kept raining on my fleece, but it's fine. It was just water, so I'm going to hurt it. Um, and it had already been cleaned. It was just sitting outside to dry. Yeah. And then it kept raining. So that's done. And then I s pulled out my Cordale, the brown one. Ooh. <sighs> I'm so in love with that color, that beautiful, rich, like, chocolate color. And that, when we bought the bag at Maryland, we had, didn't realize we got back to the car and we were going through the paperwork and it said, like, judges own sheep cannot be judged. Yeah. First so. shearing. And we were like, how did we luck? So it was a yeah. first shearing, so lamb fleece that um, had been coated. It's just, I'm saving that for my last shape. one because that is going to be, like, my reward fleece. Yeah, I, I took out a little bit and started separating the tips for cleaning, uh -huh. just because I really wanted to to touch it because it was so nice. Um, and the Cordell was really nice too, but not compared to the Cordell. The Cordell one was just beautiful, so I started that. Um, but I didn't do any spinning this week, and I haven't done any of the actual like processing of the fleece aside from cleaning it. But I wanted to, Laura actually suggested that of the three, I probably should do that one first because it's the lightest color coat. And, and it had yolk stains yeah. in it. And you want to remove yolk stains as soon as possible. So, so. it's cleaned. It's just got, it's still got like little pieces of grass and stuff in it that needs to be. Yeah, um, flicked out. Flicked out, so. That's cool. I um, finished my Shetland. So it's sitting over here. I actually washed it around 1 o'clock this afternoon and set it outside to dry, and it was dry within an hour. <laughs> because it is 100 degrees outside with a wind and 50% humidity each day. So it's awesome. Um, so this is how it's got a slight, oh, maybe not. Yeah. It's got a slight turn to it, but nothing super terrible. It is um, Southern Cross Fibers Shetland which is a gorgeous Shetland. Um, Shetland's a double-coated animal, and this is just a good um, representation of Shetland. And David always does a gorgeous job with his dyeing. There's a lot more I color in it than it looks like. like it's, it's got, like, a lime green and a blue and a yellow, like a mustard yellow almost, and um, white bits. Yeah, there's a lot more color than you can tell that's in there. So um, it's really, really pretty. The colorway name was Double Dog Daria, or Double Dog Dare, mm -hmm. and it's just really, really pretty. I'm not certain. It's 405 yards, actually, um, but I put 400 on the tag because you lose a little bit when you wash. Um, and this is my scientific way of doing it. It's just running down to the nearest number I can remember, yeah. but uh, which is super not scientific. But it's really pretty, and it's going to, it's actually like, I could wear it next to my face. That's how soft it is. So, um, it will become something, um, if it was a little heavier weight, it would become Paula's new pal, but, um, it's a little bit lightweight for that. So I'm going to go through my stash and find other hand spun for that. Her upstairs, downstairs pal, it looks really cool, so. 
Anyway, that's my spinning. Um, I've got other braids on the wheel, including the Black on Holiday. Mm. That I have a third done of. The Southern Cross Funhouse, that half of it's done. As soon as I get done with this sweater, I'm going to spin some. Because in my head, I made a deal that to keep my yarn clubs, I need to spin them. <laughs> so I'm trying to get better at, like, trying to spin um, a bit. And speaking of yarn clubs, I have one over here, so I am going to add that to the show notes. We do have um, a question this week, and that is from... Osage. 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 What do you like to knit out of short skeins of hand spun? 200 yards or less. I see you both like... I see you both spin bulky yarns out of four ounce braids a lot. I do too, but I don't know what to do with them. I have enough hats. Thanks. So, one option would be a sweater, um, is to combine all those braids into a sweater, like Leslie knit the... Um, less every, is more. Less is more. I keep getting that in every last jar confused in my head. Uh, the less is more sweater. And a lot of people have knit that out of corresponding braids mm-hmm. of four ounces. Whether it's corresponding in color or in fiber content. So that's one option. Another option, let me see if I have them on my iPad. I is, knit the uh, lichen shawl, uh, which is, well, it's kind of more of a shawlette out of less than 200 yards of a bulky weight. Also, just like spinning bulky weight. Like, it makes me happy. Um, yeah. So I end up giving away a fair amount of those skeins for other people to knit hats or mittens or whatever. Um, leg warmers would be another option. Um, knitting Pure and Simple has these super cute slipper patterns, and that only takes 100 yards of a bulky. So I think I'm going to knit those for the nieces. For Christmas, but slippers, especially if you're doing something um, that's a little like a Romney or a, or a blue face luster that will wear pretty well, that's another option. Um, another option is to take two, and uh, I'll just do my Into the World right now. Um, I got an Into the World shipment, and this is this month. It's Follow the Butterflies, mm-hmm. and actually, why I pulled this out is um, it kind of corresponds with. The May month. Yeah. They're pretty similar. There's a little bit of teal in this one that's not in this one. And one is Paul Worth and one is Merino. So I'm going to spin these two together into a pretty bulky yarn. I think um, it, um, toys would be a good way to use. Oh, like, yeah, your pig. Yeah. Your pig was less than uh, true. 200 yards. This was my, one of my birthday presents from Laura. That's an FO. So you that didn't see her knit it, but she did knit me a pig. I love pigs. I don't. I don't know why. I just do. So I got a pig, and it has a little corkscrew tail. <laughs> and that is a retro lemon studio pattern. I think Priscilla, the persnickety pig. Yeah. And I knit it out of um, a three ounce bat that Dana of Unwind she'd given me for my birthday a couple of years Aww, ago. Oh, that's sweet. So. Yeah. It was the perfect color for a pig. It is, and it's much um, more finished than your. Uh, Helen Keller elephant. <laughs> I did put eyes on your. <laughs> yeah. Where is Helen Keller? She's over there. Keeping oh my. her eyes on you. <laughs> I'm so gonna like. Never mind. <laughs> Wednesday, I'm gonna like get bored and put little paper eyes all over. <laughs> I don't know if I was just insensitive, but if I was, I'm very sorry. I <laughs> I talk without thinking sometimes. I think the whole Helen Keller thing was my fault, but yeah, whatever. it's fine. Okay. Um, so those are some options. If you go to Ravelry and you search patterns at the mm-hmm. very bottom on the right-hand side, there is a tag search that you can do, and you can type in handstone into that tag search and um, search that by yardage, which is another awesome feature that Ravelry has that I would strongly recommend checking out. It's lots of fun. Mm-hmm. I and, love the um, advanced search. Oh, I see that Casey a is a guy for that, man. He does a great job with mm-hmm. that. I also like going into groups, like the Hello Yarn group, and they have, most of them have finished object threads, mm-hmm. and looking and seeing what people have made. The Hello Yarn people, and the Southern Cross people, and the Into the World, the, pe- the people's 
they are amazing, and they love to post stuff, so it's great. We have a book review. We do, um, and this was sent to us by the lovely people over at Cooperative Press, um, and it. You know what? I don't even know if this was Cooperative Press. I might be totally wrong. It is. Well, it's. Um, I think it's self-published, actually. It's self-published, but it was. We work with one woman who right. also works with Cooperative Press, and she sent it our way. It is. Um, a the Knitter's Gallery, Gallery of Mitered Squares. Squares. And you can find it on Ravelry. Mm -hmm. And, and you can buy it on Ravelry. Um, it is by Jill Bigelow Subtle and Jane Bigelow. It's a mother daughter team. And you can actually find it in print as well. From their the website. Link. You can uh, it's twenty six ninety five if you want the both the print and the digital. If you only want the digital it's eighteen ninety five. And I'll, I'll confess, I have never knit, knit a mitered square that I can recall. I know a lot of people do mitered square blankets, and um, while I really love the way they look, I've just never had a desire to knit one. Um, but looking through this book, I was really impressed with the variation and how many different ways they interpreted a mitered square. And so with, There's 45 different patterns in here. Right, which could be endlessly changed up, you know, with colors and, you know, mm -hmm. yarn and orientation and size. And they really give you a great way to um, to make it your own. And they do start with the basics. Yep. And I like how they show you the, the illustrations are nice mm -hmm. and clear for the directionality. And there's a note saying that most of these squares do work out to the same size, but not all. So, so make sure you swatch. And they have adaptability rating. So an adaptability yeah. rating of one, two, or three, um, as far as how adaptable they are to change of either stitch count, gauge, etc. Some you really should just stick with what they offer, um, and some are way more flexible. Um, so they have directions on how to pick up with nice clear illustrations and photographs as well. Yes, um, they do talk about orientation and the different ways that you can pick up and the different, you know, the sides of the square, how mm -hmm. to do it on point as well. Yep, and how to convert any square to a left and a right triangle. Right, for like edging or top or bottom. Mm -hmm. They do talk about that as well. Um, the charts are nice and clear. Um, every square is just charted. That is correct. So that's something to consider if you do not if you do not care for charts a whole lot. Um, that's something to think about. I really like the color square too. Yeah, I think that one's really cool. Just discussing charts for a second, I do want, think that this is a very manageable chart. Um, if you're not comfortable with charts. I understand that. Like I, I wasn't always. There was a period where I much preferred written instructions, but I do think that these are bite size enough that yeah. they're doable, even if you're not comfortable with them. And they're very small, so if, um, I mean they're small finished objects. So mm -hmm. if you, I mean you're taking a jump, but yeah. it's a good risk to take. I do like this as well. The stripes. I like how they've integrated the pearl and the knit stitches in there in the stripes and I do think that this would be a good way to um, incorporate the colors if you had bits and bobs that you're trying to work oh, yeah. in you could work in color one and two in this square and then work in color two and three in the next square etc cetera, etc cetera, and it would seem like they're connected versus you know disconnected yeah sorry there was a big loud boom outside my window um, I like that the charts are in black and white in that, like the color sequence, you can see. So that's the chart that I, uh, the mm -hmm. square I showed earlier. One color is in black, one color is in white, rather than it being like in blue and green. That way, if you're using your own color right. choices, it's really manageable to um, figure it out. They do. Uh, some of the squares are a little more out of the box than others. Um, they do have some like this that are sort of off center, and, you know, on purpose. They're intended to be, you know, not yeah. exact um, equal halves. 
or look that way, um, which I still think is great. I still think it's a really clever use of the little bit of space that you've got in a square. Um, they have some that are a little more artsy, so you've got like the little flowers on the garter background. So overall, there are 30 texture squares, and then it goes into lace squares, and the lace can go from fairly simplistic, it's thundering and lightning out, to more complex. Yeah, they they also have some slip stitch patterns. They've got some very simple garter patterns in here. Um, trying to get to one to show you. Uh, they do have some with color that is intermixed in them, which they promise is not intarsia. It's a different way of carrying the yarn, which I would like to try just to see. Yeah. They have some that are like very simple texture. But even that simple little bit mm -hmm, may be enough to like keep you from getting bored if you're knitting square, square after square yarn. after square. Yeah, definitely. Um, towards the back of the book, they have patterns utilizing the squares. Mm -hmm. So there's fo frosty center eyes. I wish they had done a different color font. This is so nitpicky of me, and I know I'm being nitpicky. But um, the black on top of that colored background is a little bit hard for me oh, to see. Oh yeah, I, couldn't, I didn't even see it at first. So um, that one's Frosty Sunrise and it's a really, it's a basic, it's the most basic pattern. Um, so it's really, really though a pretty one. It is. And it looks like it doesn't require, um, I, they're all actually. knitted in the same direction. Is that accurate? Uh, yeah, it looks like they are. It combines two lace squares without any adaption. One of the lace squares is divided into left and right side triangles. All the squares are built on point and are worked in the same direction. And it uses that blue sky alpaca metallico, which I think is a really cool yarn that I want to play with. Um, it's a GK weight yarn, so it's going to have lots of drape. Mm -hmm. It's interesting when you need stuff like this on the bias. What, how that affects the drape. It really does, too. yeah. And the fit as well. Although this isn't yeah. a fitted piece, but... Um, they also have a vest, um, Misty Valley. Oh, I can't get this to where you can see it well. But it's got some nice detail across the center. Yeah. There with the mitered squares. I like the Harvest Celebration Table Runner. I think that's pretty. And that wouldn't take too long. This one goes in multiple directions. Yeah, the orientation of the squares is different. Um, they have Aurora Knight, which is um, just an open front cardigan. And I do appreciate that in this cardigan, they have it on a very slender woman, and they have it on a larger woman as well. It's nice to see yeah. that they have it in the difference in, in different models. sizes. Right. And that uses a fingering weight yarns. Yeah. Um, they don't have a ton of patterns. I think there's four all together, but... Yep. Really, this is almost like a stitchinary for mitered that squares. That's a good definition of it. Um, it's like a Barbara Walker for just bias knitting. Yeah, and I think it's well worth the investment, especially if you knit a lot of blankets. Um, you know who would benefit from this? Tara <laughs> or Sterway. That girl knits a lot of blankets, um, but. I do think that it's really interesting, and I, I love that they really went out of the box with some of these squares. So yeah. I think it's a great book, especially if um, mitered knitting is something that you're interested in, because you could you could actually you could change a lot of it up pretty easily with just with gauge going with worsted weight on larger oh, needles yeah. and knit yourself you know a varied blanket really quickly. So. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be great for baby blankets. I think it'd be a fun way to do dishcloths to kind of like that's true. mix it up a little bit. Yeah, because um, all dishcloths are squares, essentially. So. Yeah, I mean, you could just use one square if you want one mitered square and yeah. do it on the bias and add like a handle or something. You could do that for a baby blanket, you know, enormous needles and yarn and knit one big square. Yeah, that'd be pretty awesome. There's a lot of, of it's a good springboard for your creativity, I think, so. Yeah, so that was... Um, the Knitter's Gallery of Modern Squares. Thank you. <laughs> and it retails from 1895 to 2695. Based so on thank you so much mm -hmm. for sending that to us. It's an interesting one. I like interesting and different things.
Um, so favorite things. I got to see the first episode of the Outlander TV show. It was really, really good. It's on Stars for free. So if that's something that might interest you, and I blame um, the Knitmore Girls yeah. totally for that. But um, it helped me get through a good bit of this sweater, an hour's worth of knitting on the sweater. So that was awesome. Yeah, they um, keep posting pictures on Instagram with a pocket little Jamie. pocket. Yeah, I don't know who he is because I read the first Outlander and it just it wasn't my style. So I mean, the writing was really good. It just isn't the type of story that I typically go for. But um, it's, I'm not a time travel person as a whole, but it's a very because time travel in my mind is so unbelievable. Like, every little effect that you, you do. Like, she goes uh, back in time. Well, she's probably not been inoculated for smallpox. <laughs> smallpox would have existed <laughs> in that time period. See, I don't have that disbelief. Yeah. That, that you can't suspend that, yeah. yeah. Like, I can't suspend my disbelief for that. But um, I really enjoyed It's well done. There's some knitwear in it. Yeah. Um, so, if, that's, if time travel is your cup of tea, I would strongly... And you can see the first one for free on Stars mm -hmm. um, online, so... It was enough to make me go to my parents' house and look and see if they had stars on their cable to see if I could record it there. They do not. He's like, I think you have to pay for that channel. Yeah, no you do. way. Yeah. So um, that was interesting. We are going to do um, a knit-along, another knit-along. So we have our Halloween knit-along that starts September Our craft-along. Craft-along, yes. Anything goes. Yeah. It can be sewing, knitting, weaving, spinning, whatever. Uh Cupcake decorating, decorating scrapbooking, yeah, anything whatever. goes um, with that one. But um, a friend and I were discussing something, and she wishes to be anonymous, so I'm going to respect her on that. And she was so touched by the story of Lynn's niece and her battle with cancer that she wanted to do a giveaway for five of the Alice patterns, which is spelled A L L I S. And all the proceeds for that goes to um, Megan's Medical Fund, Lynn's niece. And um, so I'm going to match that. So that we're going to have 10 patterns up for grabs. And then September through October, we're going to do an end along for that as well. And you can double dip that with the Halloween cal if you can somehow make it work, um, colors or otherwise. So it's just such a good cause that we kind of have been skimming over it and we wanted to give more emphasis to it yeah so it's a pattern that lynn zimmerman who we had teach at ssk she also works at the loop eu um, designed uh and all the proceeds are going towards like laura said her niece megan had i don't remember exactly what kind of cancer it was but i know she had to get a bone marrow transplant which holy crap for like a 12 year old that's She's a lot that's greater that's a lot yeah that's yeah, that's crazy, so... And, you know, of course, we live in a capitalist society, so the medical bills are really crazy. So, you know, it may not be much, but that three or four bucks is three or four bucks that can go towards the, you know, medical bills. So that's always yeah. good as well. So we're going to open a thread. We're going to be giving away ten patterns. I say um, we do, like, the um, random act of kindness or something to yeah, that Yeah, like random act of kindness. That's a good one. Um. So, We've um, done it before, but it's worth repeating. So oh, We always do it, and I love it every single time. Which, you know, people are like, it's not really a random act of kindness if you do it to get a prize. But um, your random act of kindness could be donating that pattern to someone else. Yeah, that's true. So um, if you want to post, we'll have that thread and uh, start that. I think it's going to be a super positive thing. I think that's a great idea. So um, We have other giveaways that... And in two weeks or a week ago that we need to draw for. Yeah. The first is some awesome buttons. So these buttons right here, the little sheepies. The from fascination. Yeah, I'm gonna have to order some more buttons from her because I'm on a sweater knitting binge. It's not a bad so, thing. Uh, yeah, it uses up some yarn on the stash for sure. So what numbers are we pulling for for the? Um, um, so 176 is the highest number. All right, so we're going between 2 and 176. I have not pulled a number yet. I'm going to put generate, and the winner is number 19, which should be on the first page. Awesome. And that is Lil Angels G2. 
Okay. So if you will send me, actually, Eloise was the next person. <laughs> if you will send me Lala a PM on Ravelry with your shipping address, I will send you these buttons in a knit girl's pen. Yay! So just um, <laughs> send me your address, and we'll get that along and out to you. You know what we forgot to do, which. That's silly on us. We need to do um, prizes, random prizes for... Um, for Stash Dash. Stash Dash. Yes. We'll take care of that when Leslie gets back from... She'll probably be so bored. We'll just do it while she's gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we also have a giveaway of the custom bag set from Kicks and Giggles. Um, yeah. Kim is very, very kind to offer that. And if you don't win, you can still use the code KNITGIRLSROCK with three L's to get 10% off um, in her and shop. Fascination Studio had free shipping for a while. I'm not sure that that's still going on, but the code was in the yeah. giveaway thread. Um, so the custom bag set from Kicks and Giggles, that's between two and what? Hold on. I'd already gotten on something, something, something. I'd already clicked on the thread. Um, 313. All right, so between two and 313. So I have not generated a number yet. And I will push the generate button, or not. There we go. 219, which should be on the ninth page. So it's 19 and 219 this week. That's crazy. Julie W. Nitz that says Harry Potter fabric is awesome. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I'm excited that the house cup's going to start again at the end of um, this month. So if you'll just PM Leslie. Yes. She'll put you in touch with the awesome Kim. people behind mm -hmm. Kicks and Giggles. That would be wonderful. What else do we have going on this week, my dear? We have a giveaway for next week for oh, cool. Bling Your String. Erin is always super kind to us, um, has been for a long time, and she is offering another three-month bag club for free for one of cool. our viewers, which is wonderful. Um, so we'll start that thread uh, as soon as we put the episode up, and the question would be, what theme would you like for a club? What we, theme would you like for a club, Leslie? <laughs> well, she's actually doing a great one this go-round, which I chose, which was the Geeky Girls, um, or Geek Chick, or something like that. You know, Geek Chic. geek Girls in like sci-fi shows and stuff like that. So that one's pretty cool. What a cool. book geekery one. <laughs> well... You should tell her. I'm sure she would do that. <laughs> um, so we'll have that, and it'll go on um, for a little longer than a week because I will be in Baltimore until Tuesday night, Tuesday afternoon-ish. So we may record Tuesday. Um, it may be Wednesday of next week. It'll we'll probably see. be Wednesday. It just depends on when I get back. I don't know what time they're closing the command center or any of that. So. Okay. Sounds cool. Um, let's see, what else do we have going on? Expand Your Horizons, still kinkies. I'm loving all the chatter in that thread. Um, I actually downloaded, so Kindle's doing this new thing where you can borrow books for, what is it, nine ninety nine a month? But they're doing a month for free, and oh. like every single interweave spinning book seems to be on there. Oh, cool. So Sarah Lamb did a spinning silk book. So I downloaded that, and I'm in my time this week I'm going to read about Silk Hankies, cool. some more information but there is a thread for both knitting and spinning Silk Hankies and there's tons of chatter including some people who are dyeing their Silk Hankies which is super cool. Yeah, that is awesome. So I need to get on that. Um, I'm hoping to get a new spindle tonight and when it comes I'm going to, I want one of those colored pencil spindles. Oh yeah. Um, when it comes we'll see if I'm successful because they go like um, Aaron makes stuff does colored pencil spindles and now I've mm -hmm. ruined it for everyone so I better get one you better <laughs> um, but anyway um, I want to spin them on that when that comes hopefully I'll get one tonight I'll score one like Leslie said earlier we have a Halloween craft along starting mm -hmm. September 1st so excited. Yep, that's we have a fall Monday. chatter thread for everything mm -hmm. <laughs> Awesome, and all these groups are, um, all these threads are in the Knit Girls group on Ravelry, including our giveaways, and um, I think that's about it. Was there anything else that you needed to speak about? We have an SSK announcement next week coming up. Mm -hmm. We have, um, believe, we had, our fourth teacher was sort of a toss-up between a few people, and we, we think we've hammered it down, and um, 
Most of them are already under contract. We're just waiting for that last bit. Uh, so, and the reason that we haven't um, opened signups yet is because uh, we have to evaluate total cost before we can tell you how much it's going to be, and we don't want you to sign up without knowing how much it's going to be. Like yeah, that's not fair. Yeah, and who's teaching and who's vending? Right. Kind of crazy. Um, Speaking of vendors, I think we should cut off vendors um, maybe September first. Okay. You think that's good? That's fine. Um, it's been up almost a month. So if you're thinking about applying for vending, we'll have the form up there through another week. Yep. And then um, after that point, Leslie and I will evaluate it and uh, get back in touch make with you some guys. Decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So costs. A lot of stuff goes into costs, including like how much space we rent, how long we rent that space, how many teachers we have, what the teacher's fees are, workshop fees, um, all that. So, so we have to make sure we have our hands around that before we can open up um, the lottery. Yeah. So, But look for information starting next week. Uh, first couple weeks of September, we should have pretty much everything out there. Every time I see your tattoo, I think it's a bruise. <laughs> Every, like when I'm in the shower and I'm washing my hair, I'm like, oh, what is that? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I still see it and I'm like, oh, what is that? <laughs> um, I, I guess I don't know that I've talked about this. So when I was in Nashville this year, the first year when I was in Nashville, I got this tattoo, which is knitted stitches with a hyperlink in there. Hyperlink was one of the first um, signs for a link on the internet. And then this year I got this one. And there's no way to show this without standing up. So it is. It says "Write Your Own Song," and it's got a background of watercolor. And I really, really, really like it. I like that it's imperfect and like sort of uneven and asymmetrical. Like I really, I like it a lot. So. Um, and that's a quote from something. Right? It is a quote from a song, which is. The irony is not lost on me that I took write your own song from a song and put it like that irony is not lost on me. But um, I just like the idea of like creating your own beauty in the world, you know, like great. So um, anyway, I think that's it. I have no idea if this new software is going to compress this large of a file. We'll see. Yay! Um, but we might be buying the real version. Yeah. So. Anyway, we hope you guys have had a great week, and we will talk to you again next week. Bye, Bye all. all.